Assalamualaikum guys. Um, today I'm going to tell everyone my revert story because I have had lots of people ask how I reverted. Um, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure I posted one back in 2012, which is a very long time ago. Um, a lot has changed since then and I removed that one from YouTube and I've had a lot of people requesting to see my new one. So here it is. So do you want to say hello to everyone, Rikaya? Come. Come. Say hello. Hello. What are you doing? <laughs> it's a bad day today. I love it day. Okay, sorry about that. So I, growing up, um, I didn't have a childhood like most kids did. I was taken out of the custody of my parents when I was 18 months old because both my parents were drug addicts. I was then placed in the care of my grandparents and they moved us to a rural town in New South Wales called Wyangula Dam. I had seven kids in my primary school. Um, it was very small, very isolated, but an absolutely amazing childhood to grow up in. It was very different to Sydney. Um, when I was 10, my grandfather passed away and that was a really hard experience for me to cope with. I, I had, I always felt like my parents didn't want me because, you know, they chose drugs over myself and my brother and they're always in and out of jail and I just already had that feeling and then my grandfather who was like my dad when he passed away I really found it hard so after he passed away unfortunately my grandmother didn't take it the best and she had 10 kids and then she also had myself and my brother looking after us she was quite old and she wasn't coping very well so my brother moved out with his girlfriend to Canberra and then I got back in contact with my mum now my mum had gone from being a drug addict now she was a doctor so I was all wowed out by her money toys everything like that and I left my grandmother to move in with my mum in Sydney that was on exactly my 13th birthday that I left I remember initially one of the first first things I felt when I came to Sydney was when I started school and I started school in Kingsgrove and there was just all these Muslims everywhere and I was just so like intrigued by everyone and wow well, it's very different to where I grew up we were pretty much redneck bogans so um, I started to associate with the Muslims but I never really looked into the religion as I used to stay at their houses sleep over but never really looked into the religion at all now by the time I turned 14 because my mum and myself and my father we had no relationship growing up I didn't know them at all it was like really moving in with a stranger and I never respected my mum or seen her in the way what a child usually sees their mother I seen her if anything a sister more of a friend but it was very very hard now at first my mum literally let me do what Ever I wanted and then I got myself into a little bit of problems and then from there I ended up getting told couldn't do anything at all so I went from being allowed to do everything not being allowed to do anything at all and that was really hard my mom's parenting I'm gonna really put her down as much it wasn't the best um, by the time I was 14, my mum had kicked me out over something I really don't want to talk about, but was not my fault. And how any mother could kick their child out, I have no idea. So from 14, I was on the streets from friend's house to friend's house, staying here, staying there, never had anywhere stable. Uh, looking back on it now, it was very tiring. But at the time, I think I just found it normal because I guess as a child we have weird coping mechanisms. But one of my coping mechanisms was that I turned towards drugs. Um, they were definitely to cope. 
and my parents when I was staying with them they would always accuse me of taking drugs which I had never tried I was very very innocent when I moved in with them my the way my grandparents were there very Italian Catholics and very devout Christians and very innocent upbringing so when I moved in with my parents I was really innocent and they would accuse me of taking drugs or stuff like that and yeah so I think eventually when I got kicked out I felt like well this is what everyone thinks I am already might as well be that person that everyone assumes I am wasn't me at all so yes I did turn towards drugs um, I was in and out of refuges as I said on the streets staying with friends never had anywhere stable I was in a very very dark place in my mind and I started to get very tired of the lifestyle I was living and I was starting to really give up on life I remember there was this one particular day I was very if you see me rosary beads, Jesus bracelets, all of that kind of stuff. I used to go to Hillsong. I really believed in Christianity. Um, but I remember I started to question it because I did pray a lot, a lot. And I remember this one particular time I prayed, I promised God, that's it, no more drugs. I'm not going to take any more drugs. I promise it's not going to happen. And I stopped. But still continuously bad things were happening in my life. And after a while, I started realizing that if I'm doing such good in my life and I've, from an instant child, like, and I'm praying and I'm praying and I'm praying, but none of my prayers are being answered, something's up, something's wrong. And then I started to question Christianity. I started questioning how Jesus was the Son, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. And um, this one particular day, I can't remember exactly where I was but I put my head down on the ground and not knowing how Muslims prayed or anything and I was just so fed up I was so close to just ending it all just ending my life I just did not want to be around anymore and I remember putting my head down on the ground and literally surrendering myself to God and saying this is it if I don't get out of this darkness I can't handle this anymore this is just too much I'm just I'm going to give up so I remember sitting, sorry, I had my head on the ground, like, yeah, and I just cried for at least an hour, you know, asking God for to give, forgive me. And I remember one of the final things I said before I got up was, God, whoever you are, whatever religion is right, whatever is right, please guide me. Give me someone, give me something, give me a sign. I don't want any of this darkness anymore, please show me the light. And I remember going to sleep that night and feeling different, like a bit, something was around the corner that I felt like something was going to happen, I just knew that this time was different. So a few days after that, my best friend, uh, she was dating this guy and she asked me to come out and I wasn't really bothered but she begged me and I went so when I got picked up she wasn't in the car yet her boyfriend was in the car and his brother was in the car straight off the bat I remember looking at his brother and subhanallah he had the most noor coming from his face he had the most beautiful smile and I just remember looking at him and I was like breath taken my breath was taken away so <clears throat> I remember I was a very fake personality back then I was dying on the inside but I was always happy on the outside which I'm usually still am so I just remember jumping in the car Hi, how are you? and he just seen right through it he just looked at me and he smiled and he's like oh, hi I'm, I'm Sam uh, later that night we pulled over and my friend and her boyfriend they went their separate ways and they spent some time together and then I was left with Sam uh, I didn't like Sam at this stage at first I thought he was great but after a while I've seen him I don't know I feel like our personalities clashed and I did not like him at all <clears throat> we had an argument over something I can't really remember I think I said something to someone at McDonald's or something I don't know what it was 
but I thought this guy was a freak. Then I sort of like walked away from him and he followed me and it was really agitating. And then he sat down and he goes, I want to ask you a question. I said, what's up? And he goes, what's your purpose in life? So what do you mean, my purpose in life? He goes, where do you think you're going to end up after you die? Is there anywhere that you hope that you're going to be after you die? And I said to him, like, what do you mean? He's like, well, do you believe in God? Wallahi. When he said that to me, do you believe in God? I got tingles all through my body and I looked at him and he had all this nord coming from him. And I was in such a dark place and finally I felt like I was in lightness. We started talking. Uh, he started... I told him everything about myself. Very deep details, nothing compared to this video. And he told me that I have a solution for you to get you out of. So what's that? And he goes, Islam. So over a period of the next three weeks, my I was spending every single day with Sam and we and he was teaching me like we we're going to lectures and he was teaching me lectures or reading Quran to me and hadith and all that kind of stuff. Until one day I remember I turned around to him and I said to him, I'm ready. There was not one part in my body that felt like he said wasn't right I just knew it was so right it was everything that I had ever ever asked for and it made so much sense um, I remember the, the look on his face and I told him I was ready now at the time as I said I was living on the streets and I actually spent a lot of time living with him like as I was not living with him but I would sleep in a spare like out that back spare room and I remember when I told him I wanted to revert he called his mum in, who's like full Arab, no English speaking, and he said something to her. And I'm just this little street girl that he's brought into the house that she's hated. She, she wants me gone. And he said something to her and her face dropped. I thought she was freaking out that I wanted to revert. But then she looked at him and she nodded her head, yes, to whatever the question was. And then Sam looked at me and he asked me, for the sake of Allah, will you marry me? I want to be able to help you with your deen and bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I remember I was shook. I was young. Didn't really know this guy. Knew him for like three weeks, but everything about him was so perfect. The Everything. There was not one thing I could say that wasn't perfect. So that day, we brought over one of his friends, Muhammad Nagi Allah and I took my shahede. SubhanAllah, it was the most beautiful feeling ever. I literally felt like a tap had been turned on above my head. And as I was taking shahede, I remember just feeling all my sins washing away. Um, so on the 22nd of January, I took my shahede. And the next day, on the 23rd of January, I got married to Sam. I Disclaimer, I forgot to mention. So Sam, the day that we got married, I found out his name was actually Slayman. Uh, we got married anyway, me and Slayman. And I moved in with him and his family. He had three brothers and a sister in Punchbowl. So I moved in with them and I put on my hijab straight away. And he wasn't the most knowledgeable at the time, but he did have a very big love for loss, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we sort of learned our deen together, you can say. Uh, always going to lectures every Thursday, every Friday. You know, he'd always take with him to go pray Juma. Um, majority of our relationship was spent like watching lectures and stuff like that. I never realized how beautiful my marriage was until it's no longer around. Uh, I fell pregnant with uh, I don't know how many years down the track this was maybe about two I fell pregnant with my beautiful daughter Rukaya who is now nearly five and we moved into our own place everything was perfect I had finally everything that I wanted everything that I 
really wanted. Uh, when I was about five months pregnant, I mean, as in, couples do, marriages do, me and Slayman had a big argument and I kicked him out of the house. And this day, I'll regret for the rest of my life. Slayman went for about a month and then when he came home I was surprised because he came to the door a bear sun a cap caught an in his hands but left my husband and came back a stranger I was about a month due until Rikea was born I didn't know if she was having a boy or a girl and Slayman came home one day and he told me about the war that was happening overseas. Uh, he explained to me that he had family over there that were getting attacked and he felt like a coward if he just stayed here and he didn't do anything about it. My heart dropped to my feet, literally. I remember that day, I was just in shock. The family that I had, finally, and I was so content, was now being ripped away right in front of my eyes before it even got to start. <sighs> I went into so much stress from thinking about losing him that I went into labour and he planned to book his tickets for to go overseas for three weeks time. I was due in a month and he wanted to leave before he got attached to the child. He didn't want to sort of have an attachment and then a possibility that he wouldn't leave because he wanted to stay for the child, which, anyway. Um, I went into labor that night though. So a lot obviously chose for him to meet his daughter before he left. And we got to spend three weeks together. Here is a photo of us. I think it was a Ramadan festival. Uh, we spent a short time together. It was the most amazing time of my life. And then one day was the day that he decided to leave. He was going. Oh, the last moment I seen with same man, I actually got on camera. I have a video of it. Um, <laughs> sure. Sure. And um, he went after six months of him being there life and I went there to be with my daughter's father. I got stopped at the airport, arrested, which I'm so grateful for now. Um, he stayed there and I stayed here. There was many times that I wasn't sure if he was alive or not, alive or not, alive or not, and it was always back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I wouldn't hear from him for months on end. And, Rumours that he passed away, rumours that he wasn't, until we finally got in contact again and we were in contact for a while. And then one Ramadan, it was maybe the third or fourth day into Ramadan, uh, I think it was in 2016, I got a message from him. And he said to me, you know, why haven't you sent me a Ramadan Mubarak message? And I totally went off at him. How dare you ask me to send it to you? You should be sending it to me. You know, if you want to speak to your daughter, you message her. I was just so angry at the time. We had the biggest fight this day. The biggest fight. And... 
I remember the last thing that I ever said to him is that I never wanted to speak to him again. And I was happy that he left. Because not, he's done nothing, nothing but ruin me, which is so not true. That was the last time that I ever spoke to him. Months went by, no contact, and even when we were fighting, he would always contact me just to get photos of Rukaya or speak to her on the phone. And time went by, and there was nothing. One day I was at work and someone, they said, you know, how are you coping? Hope you're okay. I had no idea what was going on. When they found out, I didn't know, they were shocked that everyone knew. I didn't know. Um, my... daughter's father got bombed his leg got blown off and he bled out he was actually gone even though I was mourning his death a long time before it actually happened he was actually gone Everyone told me that it gets easier and even till now I still get questioned why I still haven't moved on but I want to just say this to people that lose someone really close to them. When people question you why you haven't moved on or they say stuff like it gets easier, it doesn't. even though you learn how to deal with it, it doesn't get easier some days you cope and then some days out of nowhere it will be one small thing that sets you off and you don't cope at all you know seeing how my daughter loves someone that she doesn't even know or will never know breaks my heart Every Every single day and there's not one day that goes by that I don't think about it but one thing I have learned from this is Ola takes away good things he replaces them with better he took away my husband he replaced them with my daughter he will never give us he will never give us more hardship than we can handle I never thought I could handle something like this but I have and also that you know if anyone's going through something at the moment where they just feel like especially grieving don't hold it in it doesn't get you anywhere if you want to cry cry if you want to scream scream if you can't cry don't get angry at yourself because i didn't cry for a long time and then one day it just hit me like a ton of bricks if you want to move on in your life, don't feel guilty because this is life and it has been written for us and there is a reason why it happens. Allahu alam, why? But Allah is the best of planners and Alhamdulillah I got given this person to guide me to Islam, to give me the family that I never had and even though he's not here to celebrate and be with me day by day. I was blessed to know him, to spend even a minute or a second or even a glance. I was blessed to be able to say that he was my husband and I was his wife. And I don't want people to sit there and say, I'm sorry. Don't be sorry because it will all happen. We are all going to die. All of us are going to have our day and if it wasn't how it happened, it would have happened some other way. From all of this, I wanted to just explain how I reverted, but I also wanted to say a message. 
Allah is the best of planners and he is capable of doing anything if you put your trust and your faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nothing can go wrong in your life and alhamdulillah alhamdulillah we have everything in this in this in Australia you know alhamdulillah we're not in a third world country and we we have clean water to drink and we have clean food to drink uh, clean, we have food to eat sorry and we have a, a roof over our heads and and clothes on our backs there is so many other people that are suffering suffering and yet they still have smiles on their faces so we're who are we not to have smiles on ours and always say alhamdulillah and one thing i always say to myself is imagine allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tomorrow he only gave us what we thanked him for today now i'm not the best my deen i'm always going back and forth i'm always having high deen and low deen but one thing Mommy, is i'm always for thankful me? for where i'm at can you blow this? and lastly don't hold grudges on people it's not worth it because you don't know <clears throat> When the last time that you speak to them, the last argument you have may be the last. And that's one of my biggest mistakes. Don't have pride. Don't have an ego. Don't be like, well, I don't want to say sorry first. They should say sorry first. Don't be like that. Because if you wake up the next day and they're not there to say sorry to, and your last words were something like I never want to speak to you again you have to live with that on your back for the rest of your life and it's not something nice to live with anyway guys I know the video is very long but there it is I said I was gonna do it Jazakallah khairan for listening